K Kitchen, Raf here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a white bread. This white bread will be delicious, no question, and it's a good starting point if you're beginning your bread baking journey. The process I will show you in this video will be very similar to the process you follow when making a sourdough loaf. The only difference between this bread and a sourdough is that we're using yeast instead of a sourdough starter. But the whole process is very similar from otulis, bulk fermentation, doing your folds to strengthen your dough, to final shaping and baking in the oven. I will show you everything, all of that, in this video. So let's begin! So the first thing that we have to do is to simply mix our flour and water together. This step is called otolis and it just means that we're mixing the flour and water, making sure every bit of the flour is wet and we're letting it rest while covered for at least 40 minutes to an hour. I normally use my hands when mixing the dough because it tells me a lot of different things I need to know. Like the temperature, if the consistency is the same all throughout, if the water is indeed taken in by, by the flour, if there are dry bits, etc. Otolis helps in gluten development and as you will see at the end of mixing that the dough will look like a messy slab of dough without any structure but at the end of Otolis you will see that the gluten has formed, the dough is more elastic and you will see the difference that resting flour and water will make. So the next step that I'm going to do is something called bulk fermentation and it actually starts by adding the yeast to the dough and I'm also adding salt for flavor. I'm going to use my hands to make sure that it's all evenly spread throughout the dough and I'm also going to use my hands to build some strength. Bulk fermentation is when the yeast feeds and it's very active and it develops flavor, it helps the dough rise and this is where all the action happens. What I'm doing here is I'm really just helping the dough build some strength by pinching it or cutting it into smaller pieces, folding it on each other and doing the same process until I'm quite happy with the strength of the dough. Bulk fermentation started with adding the yeast but it only really ends when we're ready to shape. So later on while we do our folds to help strengthen the dough, Bulk fermentation is still ongoing, so just be wary of that, that the gluten is also forming at this time. You want to make sure that while you're strengthening the dough, that you're not actually destroying the gluten formation that you're helping build. So now I'm just going to cover this, let it rest for about 30 to 40 minutes until I can see that the dough is visibly relaxed and that's when I'm going to start with folding. Now I'm going to do my first fold. So what I'm gonna try and do is extend my dough as much as I can without tearing it on my workbench and then I'm gonna fold it on itself. I want my hands to be a little bit wet so the dough doesn't stick while I'm handling it. So as you can see, I'm just really trying to lift it and pull it from the center to extend it. And after that, we're going to just fold it on itself. Once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to put it in the same container or another container. I'm using a Pyrex as you can see here. And I'm going to do the same thing. Cover it, let it rest for about 30 to 40 minutes until it's more relaxed. And then I'm going to do the next fold. This has rested for about 40 minutes. As you can see, it's relaxed, it's taken the shape of the container and we're gonna do our first coil fold. And as you can see, I'm just releasing it on the side. 
and then I'm going to just pick it up from the center, stretch it as much as I can without breaking it and then fold it over itself. And then I'm going to rotate it to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing about one to two times more until I can see that the dough is obviously stronger. Then I'm going to pick it up from the middle from the other angle as you rotate it and do the same thing. Once I'm happy with that, we're going to cover it, let it rest for about 30 to 40 minutes again. And then I'm going to do as much folds as I want until the end of bulk fermentation. I normally do 4 to 5 folds for my dough, but again that depends if your flour is stronger, your dough will be stronger and maybe you will need less folds. Finally, it's time for pre-shaping. We can pre-shape only when we're happy with a bulk fermentation. Bulk shaping is done when the dough is double its size and it has a lot of bubbles on top. First, I'm gonna flour the surface. I'm going to use my hands to release the dough from the side and then I'm gonna let it fall onto my countertop so we can do the pre-shaping. I made two quantities on this recipe for this video, but if you don't have that, you can skip the part of cutting. I'm gonna cut this into two. I don't have to be very specific as to the weight of each dough. If you want, you can do that as well. In bakeries, they do, but for me, I'm eating both of them, so I don't really mind. Um, and you will see here that I'm just trying to pick it up from the bottom, and I'm going to put it skin side up. And from there, I'm just going to use the scraper to gently guide it to take a shape of a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. We're going to let it rest again after this, but you're just really trying to tell the dough you're going to be shaped this way later on. Once I'm happy with the pre-shape, I'm just going to leave it on the bench or the countertop for about 20 minutes. It will be relaxed again, and then I'm going to do the final shaping. The dough has rested for 20 minutes and it's now time to shape it. I'm going to put some flour on top of both doughs and I'm going to use the scraper to flip both of them. Once they're flipped, I will use my hands to fold the top of the dough onto the middle part and I'm also then going to pull from one angle, put it on the center do it again until it becomes a circle and then I'm gonna flip it over so that the original skin will be on top and then I'm gonna use my hand and my scraper to guide and roll the dough so that it becomes a little bit tucked in at the bottom and goes tighter I'm going to do the same for the second dough, but if you only had one quantity of the recipe, then you can skip this part. I'm going to put flour again on the top and I'm going to put it on my banneton. Make sure that your banneton either is well floured has a kitchen towel and I actually put rice flour on my banneton so that it won't stick. The last thing I have to do is to cover this with kitchen towel and a plastic bag and then I'm going to either let it rest at room temperature for about 45 to 60 minutes before baking or what I like doing is to leave it inside the fridge for about 8 to 10 hours before I actually bake. An hour before baking, make sure to turn your oven on and put it at 245C and put the Dutch oven or the cast iron casserole inside so that it allows it to heat. Once that's done, we're then gonna take out the dough from the fridge, flip it on top of a parchment paper on your countertop and then I'm going to use that to just core it. And then the only thing that I need to do is to put the dough along with the parchment paper inside the Dutch oven and start baking. We're going to bake this bread for about 30 minutes covered. 
And then after that, I'm just gonna take out the lid and I'm gonna continue baking for about 10 to 15 minutes at a lower temperature at 225C for the dough to brown. Once it's ready, I'm going to take it out of the oven. I'm gonna take it out of the Dutch oven as well. And then I'm just gonna take out the parchment paper and let it cool. Don't be tempted to eat and cut through this dough the moment it gets out of the oven. I know it smells good, but hold yourself back because it's not gonna have the best texture. I normally leave my bread for about two to four hours to completely cool. That will just ensure that all the remaining steam has gone out and the texture will be perfect. Trust me on this, don't cut it straight away out of the oven. Wait, and it's gonna be delicious. And that's it! Just look at the texture. I'm gonna cut through inside and I'm gonna show you all the nice bubbles that we have on this soft yet crusty on the outside bread. That's it for me for today. Thank you very much. Here's the dough again or the bread again to say goodbye. And if you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to respond. Let me know and I'll try to respond only if you subscribe to my channel. <laughs> anyway, bye! Hope to see you next time!